Welcome to the Cloth Diaper Podcast, a weekly show dedicated to sharing stories of cloth diapering. I interview brands, retailers, and parents from around the world to talk about cloth diapering. Today's episode is a hodgepodge of topics. My husband joins me in the studio to talk about a few questions y'all had on Instagram. As well, I'm going to finish up my conversation with Lauren about cloth diapering with wool. She had a few great thoughts and she joined me earlier this year with Fluff Bum Love to talk about her company, which makes um, pants for cloth diapering babies. So I can't wait for you to listen. I hope you enjoy the show and you can find the notes at clothdiaperpodcast.com. We're going to try to answer a couple questions I got sent to on Instagram and maybe just talk about other things, whatever he's got on his mind, without trying to overlap on what we've already talked about in show two, which was a conversation with Cloth Diaper Dad, aka my husband. And all right, what's new with you? I think it was just more popular because it wasn't over recorded over Skype. I don't record my interviews with Skype. Zoom. I record my interviews yeah. with Zoom. Um, have you had any cloth diapering challenges over the last week while I pull up these questions? Finding the cloth diapers. That's true. I just got back from vacation, and I think most of the cloth diapers are in the van still. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what was going on. I just can't ever seem to find a cloth diaper unless it's dirty. And <laughs> I know you guys see me posting pictures of cloth diapers on Instagram. But I usually don't put actual absorbency in them, and so then my husband goes and grabs that pile of diapers, but it's like a tissue inside of it, so it's not very effective. <sighs> We've also been trying to potty train Anna this week. She's been curious. It's not going well. It's not going well. She like wants to use the toilet, but then she doesn't really grasp the concept of going to the bathroom. She doesn't know what she's supposed to do. No. Sometimes she does. Yesterday she pooped on the carpet and she went and she got a cloth wipe from the bin and she was picking up her poop and dumping it in the toilet. But so we're halfway there. We're kind of there. <laughs> or kind of not. All right. So my first question this week, it comes from Mirandi. She says, how can I convince my husband to cloth diaper? I think we talked about this last episode, but what would you say to somebody joining in now who didn't listen to show two? I think when we discussed it originally, it was sort of like you said, I'll handle the laundry aspect. I think just find out why he doesn't want a cloth diaper. And it's just weird isn't really an excuse. So. What if people I, say I it's more... really expensive? There's cheap options. What if people say, well, it's really gross and unsanitary? It is kind of gross, but you know, regular, like, like, uh, disposable diapers. I shouldn't call them regular diapers. Disposable diapers are pretty gross and unsanitary by themselves. That's true. That's and they true. stink. And your garbage stinks. And cloth diapers are kind of stinky, but if you can, you know, segregate it and do laundry a bit more often, then it's not so bad. Yeah. Also, newborn diapers don't seem to stink as bad. No, it's once they start solids that they get really stinky. I'm trying to think of what are some other reasons dads or other people object to it. Uh, they think it's going to be more work. Do you find that cloth diapering is more work? A little bit. In what way? Well, as we discussed at the beginning, I can't find diapers right now. <laughs> I think we would also have this problem if we were disposable diapering because I feel like I'd be that mom who would totally forget to buy diapers. Or we would be like on our last sleeve and I would have it stashed in a closet somewhere. It's like the situation about finding toilet paper. I feel like we're always out of toilet paper. Yeah, that's true. Because I think when we're traveling, we have, when we're, if we're doing um, disposables while we're traveling, we know where they are. But it, even then, it's kind of like, oh, why don't you put the diapers? I don't know. It's in the back of the van. It's like you asking me where the butter was this morning, and it's on the counter somewhere, but I don't know where it was. Butter's a bad example. I can have toast without butter. <laughs> Anna needs a diaper on her butt. Not if we potty trade her. 
Lauren Nicole asks, what do you find differ- difficult about cloth diapers? Is this to me or yeah. to us? To you, cloth diaper dad. What do you, what do you find difficult about cloth diapers as a human being who uses cloth diapers? With maybe an aspect of dadhood. When I can't tell whether the diaper, the, the little bit of absorbency in the diaper is supposed to be sufficient or not, or not. Mm. So you're like, and and actually nighttime diapers kind of wrapped into that. What am I supposed to do for a nighttime diaper for absorbency? Maybe that's my fault because I didn't educate you properly in cloth diaper absorbencies. Or well, is it my just, fault because I didn't do the laundry properly? Well, it's a bit of both. It's because like, some diapers have that little absorbent piece of something in it and that's not enough you need to add more absorbency i'm like well with this diaper the built-in thing is good enough but this diaper needs an add-in pad and then nighttime diapers i'm just lost it doesn't help that we have like in a stash of a million different types it's not like i only have three different brands of diapers and you just have to know the basics i have 27 different brands bailey has a lot of diapers so you're saying your biggest challenge is absorbency. Uh, and knowing if you can just slap that diaper on the bum. Yeah. And mostly because I have an unorganized, chaotic mess of cloth diapers in a laundry bin on the floor of a bedroom. Yeah. I, I think if we had one type of diaper and just did, say, the weird... What are those towels? Pre-folds? Not the prefolds. Flats. Flats. We had like just flats, say, or just prefolds. I should kind of like flats. Maybe I should set up our cloth diaper stash to be just flats this week, and we can see if it makes your life a little easier. It might. Maybe. Anna doesn't like feeling wet right now, so I don't know. Kate Simon asks, if you get mad at me if I make the diaper fit better like you've put the diaper on the baby and it doesn't fit right and i go and i correct the snaps i'm not really a jealous person i would say that i also don't usually go around correcting his fit just because it's a lot of work well right now anna's in the stage where like it's pretty much impossible to put her in a diaper okay she will like throw a conundrum. So if I want to refit the diaper, it's not going to happen. I I could see maybe. Maybe if I completely failed at diapers entirely, that might get kind of frustrating. But it was always. I know I've corrected my mom a few times when I've been down, and she's put a diaper on a baby, and it was just like, uh, we're not doing anything. But if you're just bumming around the house, I don't care if it leaks. If we were to leave the house, I would definitely fix it. And I don't think you would get mad at me. No. Would you? No. No. Because sometimes I just don't put diapers on very well. There, there's, you know, the level of effort I put into diapering. It's right here. And then there's, you know, wait, no. I can't say that this you're any analogy. better at putting on disposable diapers than cloth diapers. You still mess up. We've still, like, been on vacation and you've been using disposable diapers you don't get it like around the bum enough or in the legs enough and we get accidents or poop explosions Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've had that happen all right so 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 i guess the the answer to that question is it could happen with a disposable too really he just sucks at dressing our children regardless of the garment disposable diaper real clothing i don't really worry about life skills if, if I'm not bad at something I'm just bad at something and maybe I'll get better but I don't really sweat over it alright so s- <laughs> Walter <laughs> always has his underwear on inside out and backwards see that is not my fault <laughs> that's Walter putting on his underwear by himself how do you overcome dealing with poop find deal well, what like shake it off the toilet yeah so we just we're lucky that right now our children are having solid poops and that you can just shake it off in the toilet well, so it's not really a, but there was a period of time when it was like smear everywhere i just do like this 
you know, one hand on either side of the diaper and sort of do, like, an up-down motion, you know? Like, one hand goes up, the other hand goes down. So basically he's, like, shaking it in the water like a tsunami wave of the toilet bowl. something that's similar to this motion, right? So you keep the bottom part... It's too bad that this is a podcast and not a video, so that you could see my husband doing this weird it's motion. It's sort of like you're, you're milking a cow. <laughs> With a cow. <laughs> you know, that kind of hand motion? And then but just... that right there is saying that you have, that you don't care. That you'll just put your hands in the toilet with a dirty diaper, no big. Well, you know, flip up the toilet seat. I'm not ripping, like, my hands are on the ends of the diaper. Well, the non poopy parts. You're gonna have to touch poop regardless, and it's called washing your hands. It's also well, called. I'm not going like into the toilet bowl with my hands. No, and you're just like, you're just kind of swishing it around, and sure, your hands get dirty sometimes, but that's just life. And if you can't. Like, have you never got poop on your hands when you're ex- when you're wiping your kid's butt? You never gotten poop on your hands when you're wiping your own butt? Like these things. I'm not gonna admit to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's called it's called soap and hot water this yeah but i think purpose. that's like it's just about making another excuse to not do it that's probably the biggest reason people are like well i don't want a cloth diaper because i don't want to handle poop on a daily basis i don't think it's that much worse than disposable you're than handling disposable. poop on a daily basis with disposables too it's it's, yeah. it's not so much worse than Honestly, just wash your hands. We had a sprayer for a bit. Do you think that the sprayer was a better option? No. Honestly, the sprayer was worse. Because then there's there's poop spray. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, you know when you're washing your car and you're spraying your car and then you get wet too? And we had that shield, but then you had to wash the shield. It was oh, just... The shield was disgusting. I, like, it felt like it was more work to have the sprayer system than it was to be doing what we're doing right now and washing our hands. I feel like poop I, I, is more contained in the toilet. Well, I, I think... Well, like I say, I'm not touching the poop. I'm touching the outside of the diaper. And I'm mm-hmm. kind of like... Shh, shh, shh. Shaking the diaper. Maybe in the I water. will film my husband doing this and we'll add a little YouTube video at the bottom of the show notes. There were no more questions. We have a very supportive cloth diaper dad here. All right. So I did ask. Supportive? Yeah. So, I'm well, really not supportive. last week. Are you supportive of my cloth diapering adventure? Sort of. You're supportive of my podcast and my blog. I don't try to stop cloth diapering. You know that I bought some cloth diapers this week. So I don't know if he's super supportive, guys. I I just don't actively... Have you ever bought a cloth diaper? No. Have you ever been interested in buying your own cloth diaper? No. Have you ever thought about joining a cloth diaper support group on Facebook? I don't really like Facebook. Have you ever participated in the cloth diaper Reddit community? Nope. So he's not that big of a cloth diaper dad, guys. He's just like a cloth diaper mom husband. Maybe we should change the title of this podcast to reflect his true nature. (laughs) There's a couple dads who participate in some of the online Facebook groups, so you are not cloth diaper worthy dad status. Should I, like, participate in cloth diaper social medias? No. No. No? No. Have you had any thoughts about... I may have participated in a cloth diaper separate or commented once. Oh, yeah? Kind of along the lines of some of the questions today where somebody says, I just don't see the point. It's like, well, quit being a wuss. <laughs> Is that your advice to new parents out there listening? Pretty much, quit being a wuss. Okay, so last week I broke the story about the Rebecca Foundation on the episode... On the show with a with Allison, who was a early whistleblower to the problems going on. Do you have any comments or thoughts still lingering about that situation? I I'm kind of not surprised entirely that you know certain charities somebody saw an opportunity to be an awful human being, and it happens once in a while. So a lot of the board members from the previous organization have now started a new charity called the Cloth Option, and they are registering as a nonprofit. What do you think about their potential future and what they could do to be better? 
I just hope that uh, it's more transparent in the future. I think it, it sounds the most disappointing thing about that Rebecca Foundation is that so many people thought something was weird and then didn't say anything. And, you know, like I, I participated in like our union. We handle lots of money as well. Not that much money. But, you know, I, I just hope that if somebody thought I was stealing our union's money, that somebody would raise a question and then it wouldn't get shut down or or covered up. It's just kind of disappointing that nobody, you know, everybody turned a blind eye to it. Has there been any other cloth paper news this past month that has sparked your interest? You assume I read cloth diaper news? First of all, there is no cloth diaper news channel besides this podcast. So what what other cloth diaper news has there been? Not a whole lot. Rebecca Foundation? The Rebecca Foundation has been the Cozy big Bums one. closing? Cozy Bums closing, yeah. Cozy Bums is our local cloth diaper retailer. I'm sure my husband is happy that I will be spending significantly less Wednesdays there, spending all of his hard earned money. All of it? Some of it. <laughs> So instead of supporting Carrie, my local business owner, I have decided to jump down the hole of work at home cloth diapers. That sounds exciting. I'm going to try local That sounds mom. expensive because I think there's probably a lot of work at home moms doing cloth diapers. Yes. So, you know, instead of just cozy bums, now you're going to be testing the waters of about, what, 100 moms over North America? Well, 50? until my child commits to being potty trained. One a month. I said I would do one a month. One a month? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to work harder to get in a box. I'm going to finish this podcast episode with my conversation with Lauren from Fluff Bomb Love. Joined me a couple weeks ago, and we dived into the topic of wool. And so I have about 15 minutes of conversation with Lauren about wool, and I will add that to this show. So we're going to have a break here, and I'll be back. I love wool. Okay, so Wool 101, and this is actually, I should backtrack, this is what started Fluff Bum Love, is I saw the price at my local cloth diaper store for a pair of wool pants, and I nearly had a heart attack. It was almost triple digits, which is insane, so I thought at the time. Um, I so do own, oh, go ahead. I do own some slum. Yes. But it's not triple digits. Yeah, I was going to say they were, and I don't know if it was just the retail store markup on top of what Slim carries them for on their website, but like came home and had a heart attack and sewed my own pair. So like, there's no way I'm paying that much for a stinking pair of pants. So Wool 101, you can use, I've used my pocket diapers underneath it or just traditional cloth diapers. I've since talked to several moms that wear them or that use them on their babies over disposable so they're not fully committed to cloth, mm-hmm. but they will put their babies at night. Um, and then this is where longies are very nice. So instead of pajama bottoms, is you just full on wool bottoms. The beauty of wool is, yes, it does absorb the fluid, but if it's lanolized properly, is um, the urine shouldn't be leaking out onto the bed sheet. So even if diaper does leak into the wool, the pants will feel damp, but bedding stays dry. And we've all had the leak out diaper at 3 a.m. And how nice would that be to not have to strip all the bedding and get new blankets and new sheets and everything? So very nice. I we have done wool. That's what I would do at night. Yeah. With my first, because he was a heavy wetter, but my second is like a princess lighter, so I haven't pulled out the wool. Yep. Why do you think that wool people are scared to even think about wool? For me at first, it was the whole you have to wash it by hand. And I was thinking there's no way. I assumed that it was like cloth diapering and that once it got peed in, you had to wash it shortly after. I didn't know that you can go weeks and weeks and weeks without washing your wool. It self cleans itself. So you don't have to wash it as often as you know, you would your regular laundry and washing by hand, kind of like washing your diapers is again, it's really not that big of a deal. It's probably five minutes of actual hands on time and the rest of it's just letting it soak and then letting it air dry. But there are some brands where you get like an interlock wool that are actually machine washable. If you don't even want to wash mess with hand washing at all. You can't go that route. It is, Typically a little more expensive, though. 
the interlock. Yes. I have Humbird interlock that I got for a blog review. I mm-hmm. still hand washed it because it was just easier than tossing it in the machine. Yeah. My machine is also downstairs, so it's like, well, I could just wash it in the sink, and it would take me five minutes. I wash all of my wool by hand, and I don't mind it at all. It's somewhat no. therapeutic. <laughs> It It is. And it's pretty easy. One thing I think people hang up with with wool, and I know my husband a little bit, is people think it's going to be itchy, but it's not itchy. Yeah, not itchy at all. Especially like if you can go down the road of doing like the merino wools or cashmere, like you can get some that are so silky and soft to the touch. And yeah, then we- something else is my baby has eczema, like very, very bad. We're on prescription creams constantly and all of that. And the wool didn't completely take her eczema away, but because of that lanolin and being direct on contact with your skin for 12 hours at night, I did notice like a decrease in her flares. Of eczema. Oh. So that was an unexpected, but really happy, you know, side effect. I have a friend who wool, who uses wool full time because her kid has sensitivity to synth- synthetic materials. Yeah. So it's a good bridge way to do, to doing that, crossing that bridge for people with sensitive skin. Yep. In the summertime, I admit I forget about wool a lot, even though it's still good in the summer. Yes. But now that it is fall and pumpkin spice latte season, we will be pulling out our wool pants again. <laughs> yeah. And I definitely think I'm going to wander down. I know we chatted earlier in the segment about the wool liners. I didn't even think that I could just cut something up. I'm going to have to try to do that. Yeah. Cut it up and simple zigzag stitch around the edge. Or if you felt it enough, you'd probably... I've never tried it, but my assumption is if you felt it enough, you probably don't need to serge or anything around the edges, and it would probably hold itself just fine. True. I don't know of any experience felting, though. So hot water water and agitation. That could be fun. Yeah. It could be like a fun kid activity. Here, take this little sweater to the bath. (laughs) Probably hotter than that, but... (laughs) Okay, yeah, probably. So what would be your biggest piece of advice for somebody who's curious about wool? I'd say just try it. I promise it's not as bad as what it seems to be. Just keep in mind you only have to wash it once or twice a month, if that. Yeah, if that. And I only found I had to wash wool a lot because we wear it outside of the house. Into mud I would say, no, mine was the exact same. Mine was usually because we were getting dirt and mud on it. However, I did find if I just let it dry, I can brush most of the dirt and stuff off and it was okay. So we'd have our pair that were our, quote, outside woolies and then I'd keep a separate pair, you know, for wearing inside bedtime, stuff like that. Do you have any tricks for removing blueberry stains out of light blue Ooh. wool? <laughs> Dye the whole thing with blueberries? Uh, <laughs> ras- I think it's actually raspberries, but very No. <laughs> I, I've never had a nasty stain, knock on wood, with wool. I have a bunch of farmer stick. I just need to go sit down and try it. I just, yeah. I haven't done it yet. All right, that was the end of my hodgepodge episode, show 11 of the Cloth Therapy Podcast. You can find show notes at www.clothtipperpodcast.com. And I promise that as soon as I find a little bit of time, I will catch up on my show notes. I know right now a few of the episodes are a little bit blank, but I'm working on it. I'm also bringing this episode and all other episodes to YouTube as well as Podbean and iTunes. You can find me on the web at www.clothdiaperpodcast.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, Cloth Diaper Podcast. As well, you can join our new Facebook group where we chat everything cloth diaper, cloth diaper addicts. All of those links easily found in the show notes. If you have a story to share, or you're a brand, retailer, or anything else, and you want to talk cloth diaper, if you want to talk about how you are doing something amazing for your community, if you want to talk about why you gave up on cloth diapering, if you want to talk about some cloth diaper drama in your life, or if you want to talk about why you are passionate about something, seriously, send me an email, drop me a comment, and let's make it happen. It's so easy. No experience necessary. And I love it when you reach out to me because when you do, that makes it easier for me to find different types of stories. And I think that's what I want this community to look like. So send me an email, bailey at clothtaperpodcast.com. And until next week.